I'm Glenn McGuinness, and this is Outburst. On the program, how secure do you feel about your digital privacy? That uh, I feel reasonably secure. I don't think there's a whole lot of privacy at all. Honestly, it's kind of scary. My life isn't that interesting. (laughs) But first, as we enter into 2022, the economic uncertainty we felt during the pandemic is expected to continue as interest rates are set to climb and inflation continues to grow. The Bank of Canada said the average housing cost since the beginning of the pandemic has grown by 30%. But Canada's central bank also suggested as restrictions are gradually lifted, economic growth will continue to persist in this country. So how do you think we will fare in the weeks and months to come? Our question. What is your economic forecast for Canada? I don't really know. I think we're going to sort of keep going and doing stuff. But the main thing is not so much economics, but family, friends, and things that make you happier and more thankful to be where we are in Nova Scotia in Canada. Well, I think Canada's in a pretty good position overall, worldwide, if they play their cards right and, you know, pay attention to what's happening globally. And I can just hope, you know, I only hope that that will be so. Uh, I see inflation back, uh, continuing back next year and uh, rising interest rates and uh, some questionable impact on uh, what that'll do to real estate prices. I just hope that the economy in Canada gets better. That's all. (laughs) I don't, yeah, I just hope that everybody's able to afford their groceries and afford a place to live and that's all. Well, at, at the current rate, it seems like there's a lot of immigration happening and with more people, there's going to be hopefully more work and more growth. Yeah, the de- economy has definitely taken a huge hit with um, yeah. COVID-19. Uh, a lot of small businesses have taken a big hit. I think the last time I, I heard it was like 60% of small businesses, but, you know, it's probably, that was mid pandemic so we're starting to come on the hopefully other side of this so it's probably a lot bigger now uh i'm fairly confident we're in good shape um in my world things have not slowed down much at all business wise so i'm thankful for that it was very scary at first of course when the pandemic hit wondering if one was going to lose their job or what have you a lot of people did obviously um but i'm fairly bullish on canada's uh economy you know i'm not entirely too sure um I, i'm not going to claim to be like an expert or really be that in tune i hope after covid things kind of bounce back right i mean that's that's the hope you'd like to see small businesses get back to it i know it's been really hard like i've worked for a lot of smaller businesses in the last couple of years and it's been really hard on them right so that's my hope i don't know if that's going to happen you hope to see it but well i think it's very difficult right now because uh not only are we dealing with covid and trying to recover but We also have the recent uh, environmental disaster to deal with in BC, so it's it's very worrisome. I think it'll be steady, nothing great, but as people are still, you know, uh, coming back to their jobs or, but it it seems like there's a lot of businesses that don't have enough employees to maintain regular hours, so I don't know, It's, it's hard to say. The virus is so unpredictable, so. It will be a slow start, but I think we'll pick up as time goes on. I think we're going in the right direction. I'm optimistic. Um, um, I'm optimistic. I, you know, I follow the uh, financial news. I know inflation is a concern, but I'm confident the Bank of Canada has all the tools it needs to deal with inflation. I just want to say I have confidence in the current government and I think a minority parliament is good for the rest, for all of us. And I think that some good decisions will be made on our behalf and I think the economy will chug along. Unfortunately, not very good right now. <laughs> um, unfortunately, with all the businesses closed, like our family owns a resort, which is doing well because it's in a small town. However, well, looking at the market now and seeing every business that's closing, you're seeing more and more. So unfortunately, I don't see the economy going anywhere in the next little while. Same as same as it's been. I, I don't, you know, I think the world in general might be dealing with something soon. But I mean, uh, Canada, I don't think will be any different than the rest of the world. I still think Canada has a bright future. We, you know, we are a land of resources, but we have to get away from oil and gas. Uh, and I think we have such a great uh, high level of education that we haven't fully tapped into. 
And I think if we really embrace the uh, green economy properly, I've lived in Europe and I've seen they are so f much farther advanced in their thinking along those lines, but there is a real future in the green economy and I'm sure that we can do well with that. I hope we're doing well because uh, uh, I moved here from England and uh, we've been here for about 10 years and we've been doing pretty well in Canada so far. So one only hopes that things would get better and uh, well, that's the hope of everybody, I presume. So I hope it um, doesn't go out back down into depression. COVID's been very hard for all of us, but I uh, hope things are on the up now. For a young person, I would think I'm doing all right. We're doing all right for me. But to be honest with you, I would say I'm probably worried about for the future, about housing kids in our generation be able to afford houses when we're older, um, be able to take care of our children, um, wages, depending on where that's going to go with inflation. So I would say that that's a, a worry or an issue, the climate, but I, or the economic climate, I'm just not sure currently. That's a difficult question because um, I'm sure that there's a lot of detriments to the economy after the pandemic um, and any economy globally. It's hard to say uh, whether it will recover quickly. Hopefully with things being able to be more open, it will make some recovery, but I don't think it will be uh, a very prosper prosperous year for Canada or really any country in the world until the repercussions of the pandemic have resolved a little bit. I think we're doing good. I think we'll be doing okay. We'll get through it. Yeah, there's a lot of debt that's gotta go get paid up, but I think we'll be all right. New technology is going to make the way, so. <laughs> In an age where many of us do our banking, shopping, and even socializing online, the threat of our personal information falling into the wrong hands while we go about our day-to-day -day business has been a cause for concern. So we took to the streets to ask Canadians if they think their personal information is safe. Our question. How secure do you feel about your digital privacy? You know, probably not as secure as I, I, I don't know, intuitively, I don't know a lot about the field, but I, I purposely, uh, I'm very conscious of phishing and I'm very conscious of, of you know, not, not going onto websites that you shouldn't be going on to because of security, but I think that's an area where we really have to pay more attention. Honestly, it's kind of scary. Like when I talk about something or I look up something on Google or whatever, and like the next day or next hour even I see it, I would say it's a bit of a concern, but I don't know how we would fix that or how we would curb that today. It's, it's everywhere, right? So I, you know, I try to stay off social media as much as I can because I know the more information you put out there on social media about yourself, the more it's going to get harvested and the more it will be used. And I'm, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm concerned about the the big Silicon Valley platforms and you know I'm troubled by reports in the news about the way about breaches of privacy and their use of your personal information without our consent. I don't care if I'm being watched what I do online I mean you might see stuff you don't want to see but like it is what it is what kind of concerns me is that it's done in the interest of corporations like I would honestly rather the government look at what I'm doing because I know they have no interest in like what I'm reading versus like corporations where they're like oh you like this well let's sell you this it's like kind of that it's like kind of predatory and like our society kind of revolves around consumption and it like really reinforces it which no can we stop please I know there's been a couple bills recently that have been like about digital privacy and again I can't say that I was too well read on it but I think for the most part it feels as though you're pretty good in your own hands. Like I have VPNs and stuff like that. Like I like to be a little bit more safe. I've got a close friend of mine who works in digital security, so I'm lucky to have that. But I don't know for people in like maybe an older generation if they would know or if they would feel as secure. Cause like, how would you, right? Given my age, <laughs> I'm always a little hesitant because I don't understand it all, but uh, I'm fairly comfortable. Yeah, uh, I'm just very careful and uh, hope that I don't fall, fall into a scam at some point. I don't know, for me it's a bit troubling to know that any data I put on the internet is most likely to be sold. Um, and again, it is, you kind of know what you're getting into, but it is quite troubling to know that my privacy could just be bought and sold by whoever wants to do such. 
Myself, reasonably so. Um, I have a, I, I've got a degree in computing science, so I'm aware of how things work, so I've taken steps to protect myself, but I think most people don't really know. I'm more worried about my like day-to-day workings on my phone than I am about social media. Um, I think like it's kind of scares me sometimes all of the things that we accept like allow to track allow this that I think that's worrisome for me that like there's so many things going on in our phones that we're not even aware of if you just accept allow because it's almost easier than reading like the fine print Um, so I think that worries me but I would say that my information on social media is less of an issue not secure at all my sister just got hacked on Instagram Um, and yeah, that's that's literally a thing. I'm just about to like, if I could, it's just like right now, it, it's so hard too because we rely so 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 much on it. So, um, but it's definitely something. Oh, sorry, <laughs> it's definitely something. I hope um, we could reel back from. Yeah, because it's a it's a huge concern. Honestly, emails, Instagram, social media, all of it. That uh, I feel reasonably secure. You know, if the banks allow us to do banking transactions, you know. But on the other hand, I know that there's, uh, you know, who, specific governments perhaps that are interested in disrupting our, our 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 countries in some ways, and it's much cheaper and easier to do that digit over the computer and the internet and digitally than you know building nuclear weapons and things, and it's really far more disruptive. We've really seen that in the United States. What happened with the time with Trump as the president? Well, I think in this day and age, there is very little digital digital privacy because our apps, everything is monitored for data purposes. So there isn't that many that much privacy, but I don't think it can really be avoided. I feel reasonably secure. I mean, obviously the big companies are selling data and whatnot, but I feel like if it's at the end of the day, if the outcome is to show me ads that are more relevant for me, then I don't see it as a bigger problem. It becomes a bigger issue once it becomes more accessing private data and stuff that maybe they should not obtain access to without permission. I don't think there's a whole lot of privacy at all. Um, I, it, I think it just barely exists. Um, so, yeah, I, I just, I think... We've given it up with, you know, cellular phones and, and, and Facebook and LinkedIn and Instagram and all that. It's just, everything's out there. So I just try and keep my passwords complicated. <laughs> and uh, so far, so good. It's one of those double-edged sword questions, right? It's not, there's so many things that you can say yes or no to, but it's the things we sign up for. You know, digital security is always being hacked. We need to get more secure on it. But, you know, people are getting smarter and smarter with the hacking. So we need to stay up to the times with those things. I've recently gotten hacked (laughs) on my uh, credit card. So um, I, I will say that I've always been somebody who maybe didn't take digital security as seriously as I should have and like would sign up for different like newsletters and order from different maybe like not as secure um, websites and I've now seen the other side of it and uh, will moving forward take it more seriously. Mm. It's definitely a very real concern. Not very secure actually. I, I think that the, the people who want to get access at stuff if they really want to can do it. So not, not secure. Digital privacy? I don't think there is such a thing. That's it. I, I really don't. I've has an it has an example. This morning I was on a social media platform. I will not say the platform that I was on, but it my camera reacted like it had just taken a picture. And I didn't take the picture, and that is the truth. That happened to me this morning. And that is not the first time that something like that has happened to me with digital privacy. However, my life isn't that interesting. (laughs) When was the first woman elected to Parliament in Canada? 1896, 1921, 1940. 1896. 1921, 1940. 1896. I agree. I believe 1921. I'm thinking 1940. Yeah, me too. Kim Campbell. 
Is that her name? 1940. 1940. 1921. That's my final answer. 40. 1940. I'm going to go with option B. 1921. You would be absolutely correct. Thank you very much. It's been 100 years. Yes. Congratulations. In 1921, history was made when Canada's first female member of parliament was elected. Agnes McPhail was born in Gray County, Ontario, to a farming family. In 1921, most women in Canada were eligible to vote, and McPhail decided she would run for office. She won her Ontario riding on December 6th of that year. Over almost two decades, Agnes McPhail proved to be an effective voice in Parliament, focusing on issues such as pensions for seniors, equal pay for women, ethnic and religious tolerance, and improving conditions in prisons. In 1940, McPhail was defeated in the federal election because a blizzard kept people from voting in her riding. She would go on to serve in provincial politics after that. Former Canadian Prime Minister John Diefenbaker once said of her, Canada produced five great politicians. Agnes McPhail was one of them. While the vaccine demographic has expanded to ages five years old and up, COVID numbers continue to climb across the country. But things are still opening up and people are allowed to gather, albeit with masks at events like concerts or sporting events. This has many people happy to resume life as it was before the pandemic and others thinking maybe we are jumping the gun. Countries like Germany, Austria and Denmark have reinstated COVID-19 restrictions as cases continue to surge in Europe. But do you think we're out of the woods or is it still time to exercise caution? Our question. Are COVID restrictions being lifted too soon in your province? I think that in the course of the pandemic, Alberta has been too quick to uh, assume that the problem is resolved and has not been strict enough on regulating restrictions because uh, at one point, most recently in the summer, they said they were 10 days away from uh, hospitals failing and maximum capacity being already over. So it's very concerning and I think that the current government is not taking the pandemic serious enough, if anything. He, um, Jason Kenney refuses to listen to Dina Henshaw's um, recommendations and has continued to ignore them. And I don't think that Alberta is doing well amongst any of the provinces or territories in handling the pandemic. I like the way it is right now where we have vaccine passports and everything is kind of being monitored really closely. I feel like that really helps uh, increase the feeling of public safety. So I think what we have right now is good. I don't think they are being lifted too soon. I think it is about time. Most people are fully vaccinated, so I think it is time to lift some of the restrictions. Well, they certainly were at the beginning of July. That was an absolute mistake and we paid the price for that. Um, and I think right now they're probably taking a more cautious approach. Uh, uh, you know, numbers are going up again in Europe. And uh, if we loosen things again too quickly, then we're just going to get into the same problem. I mean, it, it's all about how many people are vaccinated, but we still don't have a full enough vaccination level that really sort of gives us herd immunity. I think only time will tell that one at this point in time. I mean, obviously Europe's having issues again. And we could be, you know, going down that wrong rabbit hole again. I hate to see the numbers go up again. But, uh, again, yeah, people need to have a life too, so you can understand it. And we'll just have to take whatever becomes of it. I wouldn't really say too soon, but the problem is you've got a lot of people that aren't vaccinated and they're just going about their daily lives and, you know, and socializing. And, and I, I mean, they have the right but what you're doing is affecting a lot of other people with the disease that's probably going to kill them. So, you need to get vaccinated. What's the big deal? Just do it. Just do it. I think Nova Scotia has done very well on COVID restrictions. I don't know what is being lifted. I'm not up to date in that. But I think they should keep the mask mandate in and uh, social separation for a little while to come yet. That's a really hot topic. <laughs> it's a very hot topic. Um, Personally, they, either way, it doesn't.
bother me. I, I tend to go with the flow. However, I do feel for small businesses because they've had to stay closed. I also feel for people that are, you know, the anti-vaxxers and the vaxxers and that whole thing that it's, that's, it's causing in society, I don't like that part of it at all. And I think each province is doing what they feel is best, but I must say I'm so happy to be in the province that I'm in, Nova Scotia. No, I think we have a good solution here. Uh, I think that uh, the, the, the gradual opening up and keeping masks on is keeping us all safe and we're not getting pulled back in like some of the other provinces have been. So I'm, I'm very uh, happy with the approach our local government has taken. I don't think so. I mean, obviously I don't know everything. To me personally, like being double vaccinated, um, you know, I feel comfortable getting out there with others who are choosing to be vaccinated as well. And, uh, you know, I feel pretty safe. I feel like now's the time to get back out there and start living life again, but it's just my opinion, I guess. I'm comfortable with what's happening. Really anxious for uh, the kids to get vaccinated so that then I think we can open more uh, with more confidence. No, I, I'm uh, satisfied with how it's going. I would say so, yes. I don't want us to have to fall back into, you know, the heavy, heavy lockdowns. I would say play it safe and then wait for things to get even better before lifting the restrictions even more. I don't think so. I think they're taking a pretty measured approach in Ontario. Uh, the, early on in the pandemic, there were a few decisions that kind of were counter to the science advice, but I think I think they've been pretty good, uh, pretty well measured. I, I haven't seen any contradiction between what the science uh, advisors and table have said and the provincial government, not recently. I, I don't think so. I think at the end of the day, we do have to return to some sense of normalcy and you can't live your life totally in fear. I think we still have to respect that it's a very serious threat, that it's a very real virus. But I think you need to go back to living your life at least somewhat normally. Um, obviously masks, you know, some social distancing, getting your vaccine if you can, if it's right for you, right? Like, I think that's all very important and you should consider that as well. But for the most part, you have to, you have to live your life and, and get back to some normalcy at the very least. It's been almost two years since this pandemic was declared worldwide, which has altered so much in our day-to-day -day lives. But on the upside, it may have also pushed us to think and do things differently. We took to the streets to ask people what constructive wisdom they've collected since COVID-19 began. Our question. What positives can we draw from the pandemic? Positives? I think that people have now realized how important it is to be around family and the people that they love. That's a positive. And I think that for some people it gave them the Maybe that it was the right time for them to make a move in their life to do something different, to take an, up a new hobby or maybe change careers, something that they would have never done had the pandemic not happened. I think there is. I think people have been kinder to each other. I think people talk more in the street and they get out and walk and go in parks. So I think that's the positive things to get out of the pandemic. Not a whole lot because of people that aren't vaccinated, using up the beds and intensive care. And my brother's waiting for cancer surgery. So nothing positive for me, my opinion. How about yourself? I think it's made people be more aware of cleanliness and they're more innovative of how to run a business and do it from home instead of going to the office. It's, so those are some of the positives. I think the positives would be getting to know your local local areas much more intimately than we had in the past where we'd kind of bypass uh, what's right in front of us and look for more exciting destinations. And I think just a better appreciation for disease and viruses and how they, how the impact can, can really uh, be profound. You know, we're not really dealing with it in almost a, a hundred years since the Spanish flu. It's made us more aware of looking after our neighbors. There's a lot of positives and I really feel the world need it to pause as a whole, right? Everything needed to slow down. It was going way too fast. I just want to say I've never been healthier in my life is because I wash my hands all the time and wear a mask. So <laughs> that's the benefit for us of COVID-19. Otherwise it sucks, but uh, we've learned to live with it and we've come to appreciate what it means to follow the rules and be compliant. And we're all better off if we do. Lots and lots of family time. 
So getting closer, uh, spending time with family, getting to see my nephews more often, getting to see my nieces, um, and just really keeping to ourselves and having a family bubble. What's positive is we understand, that a lot of people really understand better that we are a community and we have a lot in common uh, in that way and we need to work together and, uh, and uh, leadership, how important leadership is at the, at the same time. But it's not just the people themselves, but uh, the leaders have to be in sync. And I think it's important that we, we get us, the, the positive is that we have a better sense of ourselves as a community in that way. A lot of time to reflect, uh, a lot of time to kind of better myself, you know, got a puppy. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of stuff that I could kind of work on internally, but it was weird too, that came with a negative in the sense that you're isolated for so long. Like I was lucky to have my partner with me in quarantine and you know, we got to have each other to bounce ideas off of and talk. But if I was alone, like, I don't know, I, I would have gone a little crazy, <laughs> that's for sure. I'm really encouraged the way our politicians have behaved and coming together and doing what they needed to do. Um, it's been tough on everyone, but Talking to people generally, you know, they sort of made the most of it. And I think it showed how resilient I think we are as Canadians. Just learn to work together as a community and kind of think about what's really important. I think we kind of lost track of that before the pandemic. So now we're all kind of just caring about one another a lot more and everyone wants the best out of this situation. Having time away from the real world was beneficial to people so that they could first of all get in more touch with themselves and have more time to invest in themselves and second of all there was a huge uh, popularity with talking about taking care of yourself and how to like I said take care of your mental health so I think that was really positive to come out of the pandemic. Maybe an opportunity to slow down and spend time with family uh, an emphasis on our health and how important that is. More health, safety, for sure. So people are more concerned about germs, which is always a good thing. I think some people are learning more about the possibilities of these type of things before where they never, it never crossed their mind that something like this could happen, but now it's in their mind that it, even if it does become over, it can happen again. So I think we can be a little more prepared for it. Thanks for watching this episode of Outburst on CPAC. If you have any comments about this show or any other show, you can find us on social media. You can also find us on our website at www.cpac.ca. I'm Glenn McGinnis, and on behalf of my colleagues at the Cable Public Affairs Channel, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. <laughs>